Hello everyone, ARG back with some more Franchise Key Manager 8 and our never-ending quest for the Stanley Cup using the Ellie Kings in the Historical Challenge. <clears throat> A couple of uh, little things I want to bring up here before I get started. Um, after I uploaded the previous part on YouTube, uh, Stoner Matt reached out to me, well, in the comments of the video saying that uh, part of why the Sharks only drafted 10 players might have been because of the dispersal draft that uh, was going on with the Minnesota North Stars at the same time which is something that I was not super familiar with uh, I kind of touched on that during the last stream where you know I was kind of young back when the Sharks entered the league so I didn't remember exactly everything that happened and he suggested that I reach out uh, on the forums uh, to make sure that it wasn't like a mistake or something like that which I did and I didn't research anything before I did that I was kind of tired so that's kind of my bad uh, <clears throat> Jeff did uh, the one of the devs for the game uh, Jeff did reach a uh, answer my post on their forum saying that uh, it's working as intended uh, because of the dispersal draft which I researched after the fact which I probably shouldn't have done that but uh, anyway better be enlightened at one point in time than never at all so basically it's working as intended because of the dispersal draft the sharks only technically drafted 10 players now the problem uh, is that the dispersal draft itself is not implemented in the game yet. Jeff hinted that it's something that they should be able to implement in the future, uh, but it's not there yet. So my concern now becomes that I'm not sure that the Sharks are going to be able to fill up their team. So we're July 7th, right? And if we go and look at the Sharks... They still only have 10 players, which are the 10 players that they drafted, including Glenn Ely from us. Uh, the rest has been, you know, picked from other teams and everything. And it's all nice and dandy. Now, keep in mind, the, the part where I think there's going to be an issue, and I hope not, but I think that there might be, is that in those years, most free agents cost you a first and a third to sign, so I don't know how they are going to fill their team. They don't. They only have one set of first and third to fill that up. Now, of course, they might be able to go to uh, some um, older free agents that are not tied to a team, but I, I'm not sure that there's going to be enough of them. I have no idea. So I guess we're going to go ahead and find that out probably today. I hope there's not a problem. If there's a problem, I'm going to have to reach out to the devs again. And I might have to upload my save to them so that they put enough players on the Sharks so that they can get going or something. But uh, yeah, I'm a little bit worried about that part. Maybe that it's unfounded and it's going to be fine. I don't know. We'll see. So the other piece that I wanted to bring up before I get started is that I realized after I was done, so I had to kind of stop in a hurry uh, last time out. Uh, sorry about that. Usually I try to do all of the off season in one go. Um, I didn't. I had not signed a new assistant coach and new scout, so I took care of that off screen. Uh, those are not the most interesting uh, signings to make, so yeah. So I got Joel Arnold for my offensive coach, and then I got some scout, I don't remember who it was. I think it might have been Pat Ginnell, or maybe not. I, I don't really remember. Not a, not a big deal. All right, so other than that, we're pretty much exactly where we were at when I stopped yesterday. So are we going to get into a game-stopping uh, situation here today? I don't know. Let's find out. 
Um, yeah, there. I think that uh, I'm. I'm gonna try to play a couple more years, and then I might try to bring up to the devs attention the kind of dual lists of free agents that i explained last time so maybe for ease of figuring it out for them uh, maybe if i have it on the video it's gonna be easier for them so basically if you go to <clears throat> nhl transaction and you go here to free agents you know you have that list of players right so right now the you know the two most talented free agents that are available are Ron Tugnut and Stefan Quintal and you know that's the free agents right there. Now I don't know if you can um, let's see if I do that here. Trying to see if there's an easy way to get those other players from here. there's a I don't think there's an easy way to get to it now <clears throat> if you come through here and you go to transactions from your team screen and you go to free agent center you have those other free agents showing up that are not showing up in the other screen or at least that are not showing up without tinkering with the filters I think it's weird but anyway So I've been able to fill my team with some players I would love to put my hands on Sergei Fedorov, of course, but I, I can't, so. But anyway, all right, so I just wanted to kind of add it, have it on screen as a reference, just in case. Now we're gonna go, go ahead and continue advancing here. So surprisingly, I might want to look at a forward or acquiring a forward, maybe in the waivers draft. Uh, because Ron Duguay and Dan Gratton are not in HL caliber anymore. Uh, even Ron Duguay, even though he has a star and a half, uh, if you look at his ratings, his best role is an eight. That's not gonna cut it. So, yeah. We'll see, I have Robert Reichel that can play. So he will be playing on the NHL squad. I'd love for Robert Lang to uh, get a little bit better at something. Uh, he's not ready yet, though. So, yeah, I'm uh, maybe one forward short of what I would like to have on the team. Not a lot going on here. Oh, there's been a trade between the Jets and the Sabres. Mario Marois and a fourth round draft pick are going uh, to Buffalo for Curtis Joseph and Martin Brochu. Wow, what a trade. The Jets fleece the, the Sabres. Cujo for Mario Marois and a fourth round draft pick, basically. That's, uh, yeah. Buffalo uh, didn't make it. <clears throat> Buffalo didn't make a great trade there. <clears throat> Sorry. 
So Sylvain Surgeon is still on the block with the Whalers. Look at how much he dropped in terms of stars. He was a four and a half star player at the end of last season when they put him on the block. He's now a three star player. There's been a trade between the Nordiques and the Islanders. Ken Quinney and a seventh go to the Islanders for Bob Basson and the rights to Pascal Trugnitz. So Bob Basson did play for the Nordiques in real life, so that uh, yes, that kind of makes sense. All right, so I guess slight advantage to the Nordiques. Basson should be a little bit better than Quinney. But uh, not a great, uh, not a gigantic trade or anything like that. So only 10 players on the Sharks. I am worried. Maybe I should trade them, you know, five players for one and do that like a few times just to fill their roster. Stefan, uh, FJ is going to be happy. Stefan Lebeau is making the news here. Um, so the Flyers tried to make a, a, an offer sheet to Stefan Lebeau, but the Bruins matched the offer. I'm sad I couldn't get Rob Blake. I, I offered a lot of money. Oh, so Peter Klima is still on the trading block in Detroit. Oh, Sylvain Couturier got uh, an offer sheet from the Flyers. The Flyers are desperate for a center. So Sylvain Couturier is getting a three-year deal offer from the Flyers. I am not going to match the offer. And I'm getting their first and third again. <laughs> so for two years in a row, I'm getting the first and third from the Flyers. That's a crazy price to pay for Sylvain Couturier. All right, we're gonna go ahead and continue advancing here. Bob Carpenter is still on the trading block in Buffalo. Oh my god, the Blackhawks were finally able to trade Steve Tsujura after that he went through waivers about a million times. The Devils acquired him. So Steve Tsujura and... Oh, yeah, okay. It's Steve... Oh, dear God. The Devils got fleeced. Steve Tsujura and Gary Nylon are going to the Devils for Keith Ketchuk. So Keith Ketchuk is going to be playing for the Blackhawks. What are the devils doing? What the heck? You have Keith Ketchuk and you trade him for the... I could have acquired... Well, I can't, but... Wow. That's two really bad trades this offseason that we've seen. Hey, I like it. You know what? It's realistic in a way. Uh, GMs get fleeced sometimes, so I don't have a problem with that happening, but man. Oh, Gary Nylon and Steve Sujura for Keith Kachuk. Man. Alright, the top setting jerseys. 
for the Kings, Wayne Gretzky, Artus Irbe, Mike Gartner, Luke Robitaille, and Gary Galli. Finally, Artus Irbe setting some jerseys there after his amazing first season. And in the NHL, Gretzky was fifth and Artus Irbe was 15th. Oh, that's the Hall of Fame induction ceremony. Dennis, Denny Padvin was in, of course. Daryl Sittler as well, of course. Rick Middleton was in. And Gilles Meloche as well. Now we're gonna get the news for all four of them. There we go. Don't uh, don't really care to read through those. All right, August second. Oh, the Sharks have added uh, a few players. Mostly, <clears throat> they signed three of their rookies, so they have 13 players now. They signed Forsberg, Scott Walker, and Johan Edberg. So they need at least seven more players to be able to play. Are they going to make it happen? I don't know. Maybe I could try to trade them Dan Gratton and... Uh, and Gerald Deduck for Peter Peter Forsberg to try to match that trade for Keith Kichuk. I can't get Forsberg. Sadly. Now Greg Adams is somebody that I could get. Coach report on new players, alright. Yeah, Greg Adams is still a three and a half star player. Should still be a pretty decent player. He had 60 points in 65 games last season. That's pretty good. But yeah. I don't know. He's probably going to be expensive. Well, one thing I might want to do is come here. Then look at whom I am not looking to bring back and put them on the trading block. I'm gonna keep you, you, I guess Alex X might develop. I don't think he will, but he might. Gustafsson might. Yeah, you're going on the trading block. Yeah, keep him. All right, so that that's only two. Oh, plus my uh, plus this guy. You never know what somebody's going to offer you. And run to gay. You never know. All right. <clears throat> Let's advance further. Oh, wow. So that's something that could... Uh, <laughs> lead to confusion if you're watching that and you don't realize I'm making a historical run because Montreal just traded Caulfield but it's not Cole Caulfield it's Jay Caulfield and they traded him to the Sharks so hopefully the Sharks uh, are tra trading just a draft pick for him that would help bolster their lineup no alright so Steve Casper and the rights to Keith Redman are going to Montreal for Jay Caulfield and the rights to Mario Roberge. The Sharks didn't make a good trade here. Not a good trade. Casper is better than any... Uh, well, he's not great or anything, but he's still better than any of those two players. 
But it is Mike Milbury at the helm, so what do you expect? So advancing through the days. All right, Rangers are still trying to move James Patrick, three star defender. I cannot trade for him. Oh boy, Jeremy Ronick is going to release an album. While everyone knows his skills on the hockey ring, few people realize that Jeremy Roenick has skills in the recording studio too. The Chicago Blackhawks Center announced today that he will release a country album entitled The Many Moods of Jeremy Roenick. It's something I've been interested in for a while, and this offseason I just decided to make it official and get it done. I don't plan on leaving hockey behind quite yet, but I'm hoping this up. Album does well. The release is self-titled and is expected to be in stores across the country this week. It features Ronick providing vocals as well as playing instruments. I read a couple of the songs, it's not half bad, said teammate Adam Foote. Some of the guys have <laughs> ripped Jeremy about his music before, but I don't think anyone's laughing now. Oh my. Ooh, we have a trade proposal from the Edmonton Oilers. Is it something we can pull the trigger on? Oh, we can't. They're offering us Mike Matsuchi for Dan Gratton, but I cannot take Mike Matsu Matsuchi. So I'm gonna have to say no, sorry. Oh, Craig McTavish is on the block. Of course, Craig McTavish playing for the Oilers. Four-star player, 33 years old. Islanders are shopping John Tunnelly. care about that um, New Jersey offering up Patrick Sundstrom on the trading block and the Canada Cup starts today cool oh I have players playing in the Canada Cup that's fine, there's no games right now, so I'm fine with that. Just don't go and get injured for the year. Alright, so Canada defeats Czechoslovakia in Canada Cup. 8-2 victory. Gretzky had two assists, Gartner had three goals in that game. <clears throat> Sweden defeats Russia 4-3 and I have McGilney and Gusarov in there and they didn't get a point the best selling jerseys for Ellie in the month of August Gretzky, Gartner, Robitai, Irby and Galli <clears throat> top selling jerseys for August in the NHL Gretzky was 5th and Gartner was 18th Ooh, Pat Falloon signed in Montreal. So Montreal took a flyer on Pat Falloon. 
We're September 1st and the Sharks are... Oh, they have 19 players now. Okay, they might be able to do something. We might be okay, folks. Yeah, they have, you know, a lot of half-star players that are not ready to play in the league. But, hey, at this point, I just ask that they have enough players on the roster to not bug my game. Yeah, they signed Mario Robert, which they had to. Yeah, something tells me... Uh, something tells me that uh, they, they probably won't win many games. Alright, so I have confidence that they can find one more player in the 18 days that uh, are remaining. Oh, the Flames signed Nikolai Borchevsky to one year. Now, that's interesting because he wasn't that other... Okay. Then why isn't anybody signing Sergei Fedorov? Ooh, sorry. Canada defeats Finland 6-2. Uh, Gretzky had a goal in two assists. And Mike Gartner had a goal in an assist in that game. United States defeat Russia 3-2. None of my Russian players had points again. Alright. We're going to continue advancing here. Canada defeats Sweden in the Canada Cup. Gretzky had two assists, Gartner a goal and an assist. And Russia defeats Finland with Gusarov getting a goal in that game. If you see that news, but uh, yeah. All right, Canada defeats Russia in Canada Cup. 10 nothing. Wow, 10 nothing. So Magilny, Gusarov obviously didn't get anything. Gretzky, a goal and three assists. Gartner, a goal and four assists. Great night for Mark Messi. He had a goal and four assists. And Mike Gartner had a goal and four assists as well. And the Canadians have put Patrick Roy on the trading block. Wow. Now that's news. Yeah, I guess they want to give the, the net to Brian A. Word. If Patrick Roy gets traded, that's probably going to be the biggest trade I have ever seen in any iteration of Franchise Hockey Manager. Canada defeats United States uh, in the Canada Cup 5 0. Oh, no point for either Gretzky or Gartner. Russia defeats Czechoslovakia. No points for either of my players. The semi-finals are going to be Canada against Russia and United States against Sweden. Canada defeats Russia. 2-1. Uh, Not the 10 nothing trouncing that uh, we saw earlier. Gretzky, an assist, Gartner a goal, and no points for my Russians. 
And Gusarov is improving at right defense by playing right defense for Russia over there, I guess. Canada defeats United States in Canada Cup 4-3. A goal and two assists for Gretzky. Gartner had two assists. Canada Cup MVP was won by Paul Coffey. Best goalie was Patrick Roy. Best defenseman was Ray Bork. Best forward was Mike Gartner. And, the Canada, and Canada wins the Canada Cup against the U.S. All right, we have six days left before the start of preseason. Oh, Phil Owsley is on the block as well. There's some really interesting players on the block. I hope that some of those names move because some of those names did move in real life. Maybe not in 1991 per se, but some of them moved. It is official, folks. The Sharks are going to be good. They have 20 players. Eight of them are defensemen, <laughs> but uh, hey, they they should be able to proceed. Hopefully, they get a few more. <coughs> Hopefully, they get a few more forwards. Now, one thing that so Peter Forsberg is apparently going to be paid a dollar to play in the NHL this season. That's one heck of a deal. Right, four more days and then preseason starts. Preseason starts tomorrow. Okay, they still only have 20 players. That might change a little bit. We're gonna hope, but they at least are able to go even if some <coughs> defensemen are gonna play at forward. And of course, they're screwed if they have any injuries. Um, so for preseason, I'm going to go ahead and recall everybody. Which, you know, that's really not a whole lot of people. I also don't have a whole lot of depth. But that's because of that extra challenge. There's players I had to let go. Because they had the wrong initials. So first preseason game is going to be against the Sharks. Uh, <clears throat> I talk too much about the Sharks. It's going to be about against the Capitals, not the Sharks. Right, so the, <clears throat> the Capitals have Clint Malarchuk, Andy Moog, Jean-François Labbé, and who is this guy? Is, is, what? Zabrodsky Reom. Never heard of that guy. <coughs> right, on D they have Grant Ledyard, Scott Stevens, Peter Tagliani, Bill Older, Kevin Hatcher, Larry Murphy, David Shaw. Uh, up front, they have Brent Ashton, Miller, Sinisalo, Danton Cole, Alan Aworth, Dale Hunter, Leach, Bernie Nichols, McTavish, Bugberger, Dave Christian, Gustafsson, Melanby, Drew, Renberg, and Van Den Bush. All right, let's see if we can beat the Caps. All right, so. I'm liking my centers. All 
right, we're not playing all of our best players. Like Mike Gartner is not playing. All right. Go Kings. Clint Malarchuk is going to be a net for the Caps. We're going to go with Artus Airbay. And we won 5-4. First preseason game. We were outshot 45 to 39. Wayne Gretzky was the first star of the game. He had three assists. Dale Hunter was the second star with two goals. And Robert Reichel was the third star with a goal. 14,685 people in attendance for the Kings. All right, so Jeff Smith opened up the scoring in the first. That was a power play goal from Ray Shepard and Wayne Gretzky. Then the Caps tied the game. And then Gary Gatti scored on the power play as well from Wayne Gretzky and Robert Zvella. It was 2-1 Kings after one. There was also a fight between Gordonine and Stephen Leach. <coughs> right at the buzzer too at 20 minutes. Then in the second period, the Caps tied the game. Then Randy Wood scored from Ron Duguay and Mike Ridley. Then the Caps tied again. And then we took the lead again. Robert Reichel scored from Dan Gratton and Robert Zvella. It was 4-3. Kings after two. There was a fight between Gary Volk and Kelly Bugberger, and then Mike Ridley fought Stephen Leach. And then in the third period, the Caps tied the game for the fourth time, and then Gerald Deduck scored on the power play from Wayne Gretzky and Ray Shepard. 5 4, the final score. <clears throat> All right, Robert Zvella and Peter Taglianetti got into a fight in the third period. We won 5-4. Brian Prop has a great game with the Flyers. He had a hat-trick against the Oilers. Memorable game for John O'Grodnick. He had three goals and an assist against Quebec. John McLean is out for three weeks. Um, Strain back muscle. Junior Wendyke has a great game. He had five assists against the Bruins. All right, and now we're playing in Boston against the Bruins. We're going to take a look at their team. All right, so in net, it's Reggie Lemelay and David Delfino. Uh, on D, they have Doug Crossman, Greg Allgood, Don Sweeney, Glenn Wesley, Ray Bork, Craig Ludwig, Stefan Quintal. Then up front, they have Randy Burridge, Randy Gillen, Sykes, Miller, Carson, Craig Janney, Linsman, Lebeau, Arkins, Byers, Neely, Sweeney, Owen Nolan, Nelson Emerson, and Trent McCleary. All right, let's see if we can beat the Bruins as well. Dwayne Rolason in net for the Kings. Reggie Lemley in net for the Bruins. Go Kings! Oh, we won 7-3 and we didn't even have our best lineup. <clears throat> we got outshot 51-35. to Welcome to the NHL, Dwayne Rolason, even though it's a preseason game. That was your first NHL action and you saw some rubber, buddy. Bruins open up the scoring in the first, then Mike Gartner tied the game from Wayne Gretzky and Luke Robitaille. It was tied at one after one. Owen Nolan and Andy Reimsha got into a fight. And into the second period, Bruins took the lead again. It was 2-1 Bruins at that point. Then Ray Shepard scored from Randy Ledusser and Mike Ridley. Then Wayne Gretzky from Mike Gartner and Luke Robitaille. It was 3-2. Bruins tied the game. But then we scored twice, Randy Wood from Rick Green, and then Scott Arneal from Mike Ridley and Joe Ricky. 5-3 for the Kings after two. Hey, FJ, what's up? <clears throat> That's around dinner time where you live. All right, um... Playing MLB the show or out of the park? 
Right, Owen Nolan got into a fight with Andy Rimsha in the second period as well. Then in the third, Ray Shepard scored from Scott Arneal and Andy Rimsha, and then Wayne Gretzky from Mike Gartner and Mark Astley. It was a 7 3 victory. Oh, MLB the show, that's where you, uh, you have it on the Xbox, right? That was the first year they had it on the Xbox. And then we had three fights in the third period. Owen Nolan fought Andrew Castles, Cam Neely fought Joe Ricky, and Jay Matter fought Per Gustafson. Jeff Cornell has a great game. He had four assists against the Leafs. Rick Tuckett has a memorable game. In that same game, he had a hat trick, three goals. Mike Huff got hurt. And he's going to miss three weeks with a torn ligament in his thumb. Strong night for Dave Manson in Chicago. He had four assists against the Canucks. And Larry Murphy is on the trading. Wow. Are we going to see a Patrick Roy Larry Murphy straight up deal or something? <laughs> yeah. Well, the Orioles are. It feels like the Orioles are always on the brink of rebuilding and then it looks like it never materializes. So maybe you can be part of the solution. <clears throat> right, we have a day off and then we're going to be hosting the Canucks. Wow, look at that. The Sharks now have 22 players and they have added some uh, they have added some forwards uh, including Lucien de Blois and Tur Turnbull. All right. Oh yeah, <clears throat> you're gonna be so as a third baseman. You probably should have some uh, some power in your bat to make you relevant. You're probably not like super fast as an infielder. At least most third basemen are not. Some of them were, but as a rule of thumb, usually the that's not the most nimble. All right, we are hosting the Canucks. Um, Frank Pietrangelo is going to... Oh, I forgot to look at the Canucks. I'm sorry. Frank Pietrangelo is going to be in net for the Canucks. Artis Airbase is going to be in net for us. Go Kings! And that's another win. 6-2 this time. We all shot the Canucks 45 to 23. Randy Wood was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Darren Rumble was the second star with two assists as well. And Alexander McGillney was the third star. And you guessed it, two assists as well. Uh, Brooks Robinson. Yeah, you're going to be the... You're going to be, uh, in, well, I believe Cal Ripken Jr. played some third base uh, at the end of his career. All right, Dan Gratton opened up the scoring in that 6-2 victory from Robert Reichel and Gary Volk. It was one nothing Kings after one, then Gary Volk from Randy Wood and Gordon Ean, and then Luke Robitaille from Ray Shepard and Darren Rumble. It was 3 nothing at that point. And the Canucks scored. It was 3-1 Kings after two. I see at least two fights here. Gerald Deduck and Mike Hartman. And then Joe Ricky and Shell Dalene. Then we went into the third period. We scored three goals. Joe Ricky from Alexander McGillney and Darren Rumble. Then Gary Galley on the power play from Alexander McGillney and Robert Reichel. Ray Shepard scored from Randy Wood and Mike Ridley. And then the Canucks scored made it 6-2, but it was way too late. There was a fight between... Oh, Wayne Gretzky fought against Bob McGill. All right. So that's two fights we've seen from Gretzky. All right. Let's take a look at the Canucks. I forgot to look at them. Right, so they had Douglas Lister. That was Ert. 
right, so Kirk McLean, Fian, Frank Pietrangelo in net, Marcelo Cusino, McGills, Vili Siren, Sandwith, Zettler, Donnelly, Giles, Janssen, Greg Adams, Shell Dalin, Hartman, Zamuner, Bradley, Claude Lapointe, Tara Linden, Mike Modano, Barry Peterson, Eglin, Sandlex, Krico, Tenti, McKenna Sutter, and Jagger. Oh, they haven't signed uh, Scott Niedermeyer yet. Yeah, I know Gretzky is uh, is pumped up. He's fighting in a preseason game too. That's that's crazy. All right, um, now let's take a look at the Devils, uh, who made a terrible, terrible, terrible trade during the off season. Yeah, well, I, tr I traded Krushelinski and I let Marty McSorley go so he doesn't have his usual protectors, so he, uh, he needs to figure it out on his own. All right, so the Devils have Sean Burke and Chris Terreri in net. Uh, on D, they have Bruce Driver, Ken Ammon, Craig Wallanen, Gary Nyland, Ken Daneko, Tom Curvers, Sylvain Lafave, Lilo Deline. Up front, they have Aaron Broughton, Yvon Kogivo. Uh, Johnson, Molly, Shanahan, Angelstad, Carlson, Wazel, Muller, Patrick Sandstrom, Todd Illich, Sissons, Kevin Todd, Bruce, Verbeek, and Smith. Not a great team, imagine. They could have Keith Ketchuk on that lineup, but they gave him away for scraps. All right, Dwayne Rolason is going to be in net for the Kings. Sean Burke in net for the Devils. Go Kings! And we go undefeated in preseason with a 6-3 victory in New Jersey against the Devils. We outshot them 33-27. Mike Gartner was the first star of the game. He had two goals and three assists. Wayne Gretzky was the second star with a goal and three assists. And Gary Galley was the third star with a goal and two assists. Uh, Devils scored first in the first period, then Mike Gartner scored from Gerald Deduck and Wayne Gretzky, and then the Devils scored again. It was 2-1 New Jersey after one. In the second period, Gary Gaddy scored from Mike Gartner and Wayne Gretzky, tied the game at two. We went into the third period. Ray Shepard scored from Joe Ricky and Scott Arneo, then Mike Gartner from Gary Gaddy and Wayne Gretzky. It was 4-2, Devil scored, made it 4-3, but we scored two more goals. Luke Robitaille from Mike Gartner and Gary Galley, and then Wayne Gretzky from Luke Robitaille and Mike Gartner, 6-3. The final score, and there was a fight between Pat Verbeek and Gerald the Duck. Joe Nguyen-Dijk has a great game. He had a hat-trick against the Islanders. And there was no stopping Scott Bustad uh, playing for the Minnesota North Stars. He had a hat-trick against the Canucks. All right, we have three preseason games left. And Jeremy Roenick's country album flopped. So, yeah, to nobody's surprise, Jeremy, Roenick, uh, Jeremy Roenick's venture into the country world did not succeed. All right, so the Rangers are in town now for another preseason game. We're going to take a look at uh, who they have on their lineup now. Oh, they have Peter Sidorkowitz and John Van Beesbrook uh, in net. They have invited Robbie Talis to a tryout. Brian Leach, Norm McIver, Lee Norwood, Jeff Bukebum, James Patrick, and Michel Petit on D. And out front, they have Jan Eriksson, Fenton Krushenensky, Ogran Nick Mullen, Kelly Kisio, Darren Surcut, Paul Isabart. Jason Lafreniere, Smith, Dallin, Granato, Lawton, Sandstrom, and Paul Broughton. Right. 
John Van Beesbrook is going to be a net for the Rangers. For the preseason game, Artus Irbe is going to be a net for us. Go Kings! <clears throat> oh dear God. We are still undefeated thanks to a 13-4 victory over the Rangers at home. Wow. Too bad that it's a preseason game. All of those stats don't count. Oh wow, we scored 13 goals on 36 shots. That's some crappy goaltending there. All right, so we outshot the Rangers 36 to 30. Scott Arneal was the first star of the game. He had three goals in an assist. Wayne Gretzky was the second star with four assists. And Robert Reichel was the third star with a goal and three assists. All right, the Rangers scored first, as is very uh, often the case in, when a team gets trounced like that. They often score the first goal. Alexander McGillney uh, tied the game from Robert Reichel and Gary Galley. Then Scott Arneal from Alexander McGillney and Gary Galley. Gary Galley on the power play from Wayne Gretzky and Luke Robitaille. Then Gary Galley scored his fifth of the preseason from Wayne Gretzky and Ray Shepard. And then the Rangers scored. It was 4-2 Kings after one. Gary Galley with four points in the first period alone. And he's not even a star. Then in the second period, the Rangers came to within one, and then the wheels fell off the wagon for the Rangers. We scored six unanswered goals after that. Gerald Deduck from Wayne Gretzky, then Scott Arneal from Robert Reichel and Alexander McGillney. 50 seconds later, Mike Ridley scored from Randy Wood and Ray Shepard. Uh, less than a minute later, Robert Reichel scored from Scott Arneal and Alexey Gusarov. Shortly after, Scott Arneal from Joe Ricci and Robert Reichel. And then uh, three minutes later, Mike Gartner scored from Luke Robitaille and Alexey Gusarov. 10-3 Kings after two. Then in the third period, Mike Ridley scored from Ray Shepard and Gordonine. Then the Rangers scored. It was 11-4. And then Ray Shepard scored his fifth of the preseason from Randy Wood and Joe Ricci. And then Luke Robitaille from Wayne Gretzky and Mike Gartner, 13-4, the final score. Nobody thought it was pointless. What a massacre. Yeah, great night for Scott Arneal, three goals and an assist. Wayne Gretzky had a good game for assists. Steve Larmer is hurt in Chicago. He has a bruised kneecap. He's going to be out for four weeks. And Mario Lemieux had a pretty good game as well. He had six assists. Wow. He one up Gretzky. Well, two up to Gretzky. Gretzky had four assists. Now Lemieux had six. And the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins scored six goals. So he participated to all the goals for his team. All right. We are now in Buffalo, who also made a bad trade in the offseason. Take a look at their lineup. Yeah, I guess that, well, it was still a bad trade. They, they could have had better than what they did for Cujo. But anyway, all right. So in net, the Sabres have Tom Barrasso, Olaf Kozig, and they have a tryout for Lenard Dudzi. Phil Alzey is on D with Kelly Johansson, Mike Ramsey, uh, Richard Anderson, Yuri Krupp and Mario Marwa on f up front they have Anderson, Andre Chuck, Benoit Hug, Lindy Ruff, Carpenter, Creighton, Rutu, Tucker, Pierre Turgeon, Mike Foligno, Abshai, Priestley, Dave Taylor and Patrick Shelberg. Alright, let's see if we can beat the Sabres in Buffalo. Dwayne Rolasson is going to be in net for us and Tom Barrasso is going to be in net for the Sabres. And we lost 3-2. I forgot to say go Kings. See, that's what that's exactly how it happens. Uh, shots were uh, tied 34 apiece. So pretty tightly played game. Uh, Bob Carpenter was the first star of the game. He had two assists. Ray Shepard, second star with a goal. Phil Owsley, the third star with an assist. Uh, Ray Shepard opened up the scoring in the first that was unassisted. It was 1-0 Kings after 1. There was a fight between Mike Foligno and Randy Ladusser in the first period. Then in the second, the Sabres tied the game. Then Mike Gartner scored his fifth on the power play from Luke Robitaille and Gary Galley. 
2-1 Kings at that point, then Pierre Turgeon tied the game at two goals apiece, and in the third period, Dave Andre Chuck scored unassisted, that was the game-winning goal. We had a fight between Mario Marois and Randy Ledusser, and we lost our first preseason game 3-2. And we have only one preseason game left. Paul Coffey has a good game in Pittsburgh. He had two goals and four assists. Yeah, that's pretty good. Two goals and four assists against the Sharks. Thomas Sandstrom has a memorable game. He had four goals and an assist against Minnesota. There was no stopping Bernie Nichols, former King, at trick against the Islanders. All right, so we sold some tickets. Really care about that aspect. Ooh, Montreal also wants to move Bobby Smith, so they want to move Bobby Smith and Patrick Roy. That's interesting. All right, so last game of the preseason, uh, we are hosting the Vancouver Canucks again. So we already looked at their lineup. And we saw that they haven't signed Scott Niedermeyer. So they have Mike Modano that they drafted my first year that uh, I did this. Second year, they got Yaromir, uh, yeah, they got Yaromir Jagger. And the third year, they got Scott Niedermeyer. That's pretty a pretty good way to build your team by having great players like that. All right. Last preseason game. Kirk McLean is going to be in net for the Canucks. We are going to go with Arthur's Air Bay. Go Kings! Oh, I said it right in time. 5-4 overtime win against the Canucks. Canucks outshot us 45-35. to Mike Gartner was the first star of the game. He had a goal and an assist. Yaromir Jagger was the second star with a goal and an assist. And Rick Green was the third star with an assist. Mike Gartner opened up the scoring in the first from Alexei Gusarov and Ron Duguay. And there was a fight between Randy Ledusser and Mike Hartman. Then in the second period, Canuck tied the game. Then we scored twice Randy Wood from Mike Ridley and Mike Gartner. Then Luke Robitaille scored on the power play from Ray Shepard and Gary Galley. It was 3 1. Then the Canucks scored, made it 3 2. Then we scored again. It was McGillney from Scott Arneal and Rick Green. 4-2 Kings after 2. There was a fight between Rick Green and Mike Hartman as well. Then in the third period, the Canucks tied the game with two goals. Oh, wow, there were a few fights too. Randy Ladusser and Rob Zamuner, Joe Ricky and Shell Dallin as well. And then in overtime, Robert Reichel played the hero, even though it's a preseason game, from Randy Ladusser and Luke Robitaille. 5-4 Kings victory. There was no stopping Phil Housley. He had three goals and an assist against the Islanders. And Jean-Marc Richard had three goals and an assist in that same game. All right. So um, now is the time to decide on my lineup for the upcoming season. Understanding that there might be some changes due to the waivers draft. All right. So we're going to look at the goaltenders first. Right. I'm going to send... So we're going to get to see Gravel in net. <clears throat> right now for the D-man. That's going to be a little bit more tricky.
have to send one down among those guys and I think it's gonna be Jeff Smith because I think that he doesn't have to clear waivers one way or another. Alright, and now we're gonna go, oops. Now we're gonna go with all of my forwards. And I'm also gonna have some decisions to make here. I can only send two down. Man, I don't have any death that forward. <laughs> oh. Four fly. You need to not go for the home run every single time. Well, it is 2021, so I guess you're going for the home run every single time. I always play as a pitcher, so it takes me forever. I always play as a starting pitcher, so it always takes me forever to go through one game. Alright, so who am I sending down? is not ready. You're going down. Oh my. Oh dear God. Alright. Yeah, so we have some weaknesses definitely on uh, on the forward front. not gonna be easy <laughs> yeah I got traded to the Yankee who did I get drafted by last time oh the Dodgers I got drafted by the Dodgers Alright, so that's going to be our team to start the season. We have a few uh, players that are not that great on the lineup. Oh, so from your favorite team to your most hated, uh, that sucks. It's like I'm always nervous when I play, like, be a pro in the NHL game because I'm always afraid I'm going to end up on the abs. And I'm like, what am I going to do? I'm going to score in my net all game. Until they trade me. Alright, the top setting jerseys for September. For the Kings, Gretzky, Gartner, Irby, Robitai, Galli, and in the NHL, only Gretzky cracked the top 20. He was 8. Oh yeah, because we all know that Dan Venslet is a very popular player that's going to sell more jerseys than Wayne Gretzky or Patrick Roy. Good old Dan Venslet. That feature makes me laugh a little bit. Yeah, it's a pretty common team. Oh, so did you know that in my uh, exposed save that I'm playing in Out of the Park Baseball that Ken Griffey Jr. signed with the Yankees? Did I tell you that? I might have. That didn't make me happy either, by the way. Right now we have to protect players. Right, 
two goaltenders and 18 skaters. Alright, well, I can't really complain with uh, what the assistant coach did, so I'm good with that. Oh, you were ready to go out and uh, commit an heinous crime, huh? Yeah, that's uh, that sucks. And for the longest time, uh, the rumor was that he was gonna sign with the Red Sox, but he ended up with the Yankees. All right, so today is the waiver draft, so I have uh, an opportunity to get a forward, maybe. You're right, Yankee, Yankees fan count as uh, vermin. So, uh, last I checked, there's no crime against getting rid of vermin, right? So, all right, 1991 season preview. I'm obviously joking. I am not condoning any act of violence uh, against Yankees fan whatsoever, but you can call them names if you want. With the National Hockey League season about to get underway, the early Stanley Cup favorites appear to be Calgary, led by center Doug Gilmore. General manager Cliff Fletcher has built a squad that will be the team to beat this year, but they can expect challenges from Tony Esposito's Pittsburgh Penguins and Montreal featuring defenseman Chris Chelios. Among the dark horses, New York stands out as a possible challenger with a big season by Brian Leach, capable of pushing them into contender status. The scoring race will likely see Los Angeles's Wayne Gretzky challenged by Mario Lemieux of Pittsburgh and Calgary's Doug Gilmore. The top defenseman in the league is generally considered to be New York Rangers blue liner Brian Leach, with Boston's Ray Bork and Paul Coffey of Pittsburgh also in the running. Finally, among goaltenders, Edmonton's Grand Fior stands out as the league's best, while Montreal Canadiens netminder Patrick Wynn and Bill Ranford of Edmonton can also steal games for their teams. No mention of the guy who actually won the Vizina last season, Arthur's Air Bay on my team. Yeah, I wouldn't wear a Yankees at either. Alright, so maybe I'm gonna be able to find a a forward. All right, so Steve Weeks goes first to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Yuri Ardina goes to the Canucks. Ken Ammon goes to the Quebec Nordiques. Paul Fenton goes to the Devils. Brad Lauer to the Blues. Stefan Beauregard goes to the Montreal Canadiens. Anders Carlson goes to Edmonton. Ken Queenie goes to Boston. Wow, the Islanders traded for Ken Queenie and then they let him go through the waiver draft. Oh my. Oh yeah, I want to see you with a Leafs uh, at with a big smile on your face. Ron Fluckart goes to Winnipeg, Doug Smith with Hartford, Tim Berglund goes with the Islanders, Mark Laforet goes to the Red Wings. Jim Peplinski goes to the Capitals, Bob Essenza with the North Stars. Mike Lehler goes with the Penguins. Todd Ellick with the Rangers. Wendell Young with the Blackhawks. Steve Bozek with the Flyers. And then it's my turn. Not a whole lot of choices. I 
I literally cannot get any of the forwards that are a star and a half. That Jamie Baker? It sure is. Let's look at potential then. Oh, I could get Stu Grimson. thinking about maybe getting Brian Glynn, but he's a defenseman. I think I'm gonna pick Brian Glynn. And Peter Taglianetti goes to the San Jose Sharks. All right, so now I have an extra defenseman. And actually, I might send Gernander down and go with just one extra forward for the time being. <laughs> you wouldn't smile with your Leafs hat on, huh? And then you would wear, wear the hat only if you lose a bet, I'm, I'm guessing, or something like that. I can send Adam Burt down if I need to. But I'm gonna keep it like that for the moment. <clears throat> Alright, so I think that concludes our lineup. Gonna sim all the way to the first game of the season. I don't have a abs at. I have no ways of getting one. Besides, that's, you know, that's not fair because you get to wear a leaf at and, you know, it's you're just not going to be live or anything. And you're asking for me to wear an abs at during a stream, which is going to damage my character because I'm going to be crying the entire time. Sorry, I don't make bets that uh, might make me wear abs apparel. Plus, there's too much uncertainty with, you know, COVID and everything. Yeah, the Sharks have only 24 players on their contract, so they have one spare in case of injury. Like, they have uh, Jim Weimer, that's Earth here. So, yeah, the Sharks are not going to be very good. Lots of half-star players there. But they have Mats Naslin.
All right, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop here for today. So we finished the off season. I didn't make like a huge splash. Or oh, one thing I want to check is if all of those uh, superstars are still on the trading block. Oh, Montreal took off Patrick Roy from the block, but Phil Owsley is still there. And Larry Murphy's not there anymore either. Man, I'd love to have Phil Owsley on my team. But anyway. Alright folks, I'm going to go ahead and stop here for today. So as usual, I want to thank you for tuning in. And if you're catching this on YouTube later uh, and you've liked the video, please feel free to like, subscribe, share, comment, and all of that good stuff. And until I roll this game again, I'll see you folks next time. Thank you.